I do think though that Tesla should start to force FSD onto even the casual Tesla owners who aren't on X or YouTube and get that adoption going because Tesla sees that people are safer with yeah. supervising FSD. Yeah. So for safety reasons, they would want to do it, but also just get adoption really kickstarted. Okay. You're paying for it anyways. You might as well use it. Yeah. So I think this is something that they need to like actually work on because it's such a good product, but so few people know about it. I think with V14, it's going to be even better, obviously. So I think any new kick needs to wait for that. But just a perfect example in my own life, my, my mother-in-law bought a Model Y for about four or five months ago, something like that. And her husband works half an hour away. My father-in-law works like half an hour away. And I was like, oh, like he should take it on his commute just to see what full self-driving is. Cause they had this three month trial. Yeah, I should totally do that. They just never did. And just, oh, so they don't really even know what experiencing it on, on like a daily commute is like. So I don't know. I feel like if they've got some data on customers who just never tried it, even if they had a free trial or something like that, and they've got to find some way to convince the casual Tesla owners to, mm -hmm. Hey, give it a try. Cause I think the way that they've done it so far has not borne much fruit. Like they yeah. were just as an example, a couple of years ago, they were talking about how like they're, when somebody takes delivery of a new Tesla, Elon was like, we need to make sure we show them exactly how to use FSD and have it work. Like they're, they don't actually do that anymore. Like that, that's, that was actually a great initiative, but there, there's not this kind of handholding that I think you need for this brand new like car ownership driving experience called FSD. So I don't know what the right approach is to convince the normies to adopt a bit more. But I do think Tesla needs to think about that problem and come up with some creative solutions. So we have production and deliveries on Thursday morning, likely. Curious to see how big the number is. I'm guessing we'll be over 500,000, but maybe not. I do think if it's 500,000, there'll be a bit of a reaction to that. But also you know, version 14 is coming out soon. And I am I am like super excited thing, about V14. I've heard I can't some wait. things. I was heard from a bird that tried it out, got at least 600 miles on it and said a, a few encouraging things. So essentially that it, it would, it made great lane choices, which is what I saw with the robo taxi in Austin, great lane choices that it wouldn't, it never needed to suddenly turn or break. So it's, and it's often acting before the human in the car that's supervising is thinking that the car needs to do something like a full second before. So I, I found that to be really encouraging. And that goes along, it goes along with my thinking that version 14 is going to be a hundred to a thousand times better than version 13. So it's going to be a noticeable improvement. What do you think of on along those lines, Matt? I think that the lane thing is the most interesting to me because yeah, you mentioned in Austin how good that was. And my thinking at the time was like, all right, they're using HD maps. Of course, it's going to have good lane choices because they're- What do you mean you know, HD maps? Because they're mapping all the lanes with LiDAR and everything. So it, it actually knows because they've LiDAR mapped the city in the entire path, like it actually knows exactly where it needs to be in which lanes. If it can actually avoid any lane issues- with a generalized approach that ships to all cars. To me, that's a really big bit of news. Yeah. So, which I think we all think they're going to get there eventually, but the, the real question is, okay, how, like how much annoyance is there going to be on between now and like a, an actually truly generalized approach to, to all different areas. I was actually talking with a client yesterday who like his version of V13 is not as nearly as glowing as yours and mine, uh, where just like it's still running red lights and like still having some pretty bad situations, like with safety critical situations. So it's, I think it's important to know, like we all have regional and drive specific situations that are a little yeah. bit different. And so V14, I think will be a good, very big step in generalizing some of these benefits that are in some areas to a lot more areas. Well, Elon is actually talking about it being sentient, but that's, I think that means something very specific. I will caution people. It allegedly, it still hit a pothole in those 600 miles. We need 14.2 uh, before that's going to be like that perfect, yeah. according to Elon. I think another thing people still notice with version 13 is, let's say you have a stack up, like the cars are stack up in the right lane and you need to be there. I've never heard it called a stack up. Like a What would you call backup? that? A backup? 
A backup? Okay. I think a stack up is like all the cars are stacked on top of each other vertically. I haven't run into that, but that'd be an interesting edge case. <laughs> all right. So let's say you have that situation. Right now, the car is blowing by the line of cars, and then it tries to squeeze in at the end like a jerk who's like in a big hurry. So I'm not sure about that either. I don't think that's safety critical, but you also don't want to be in that lane where you're squeezing in at the end because people aren't expecting cars to be stopped in that lane. I think like we're going to be getting to some really minor issues, but I was really excited to hear about someone's early experience with version 14. They also, we, di we didn't get them to put their finger on it, but they noticed some meaningful differences on the highway as well. So when, if you, if I have to hold you down to a date, when does your car get V14? So I'm hopeful that the early testers get it this weekend, by this weekend. But worst case, I'd say like next weekend. And then um, I would hope that I get it while I'm on vacation for fall break or something like that. And then you can't use it? Then I can't use it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it for the team. Yeah, that'd be nice. And then 14.2, I'd imagine that might be like a month afterwards, I, I would think, after you got a decent amount of data to incorporate into a new update, like from all the fleet nationwide. So I'm thinking it'll still be a while before we get to 14.2. But yeah, I think 14.1 by end of next week would be my thinking, my goal too.